Hello and welcome to another Wonderworks vlog. And if you haven't gathered by the title, we are going to talk about one of my favourite subjects today, and that is books. So each year I set myself a reading challenge on the Goodreads app. I've done this for years and years now. Um, and this year I think I started the challenge at about 12 or 15 books. I can't quite remember. Because as the year went on, I upped and upped the challenge and by the end of 2018, I had read 32 books. Now, to some people that might not seem like much, to others it might seem like loads, but I am quite a slow reader and I was very much in a reading slump at the start of 2018. So I am very, very impressed with 32 books. Like, I don't think I've ever read that many in a year. So today I'm going to be talking about my favourite 10 books out of the 32 that I read. I won't really be giving anything away about the books. One, to keep the video short and two, in case you want to read the books. So it is going to be spoiler free. It's basically just going to be the title, who wrote it and like one line about it. So it is a spoiler free video if you want to read any of the books. So we'll start off with number one on the list. And it is The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. This is a debut novel and it is very much reminiscent of old Stephen King books and Stranger Things in terms of the fact it's set in the 80s and the friendship group that's in it. I was getting really strong like vintage Stephen King and Stranger Things vibes from it. It's a thriller with a supernatural twist, so again, Stephen King-like. And for a debut novel, I absolutely loved it. Like, a huge thumbs up from me. And this is the book that got me out of the reading slump in 2018, so I am very much grateful to it for that. Number two on the list is How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Now, Matt Haig is a hugely popular author, but I haven't read any of his novels like Notes on a Nervous Planet or anything like that. I have them, I just haven't got around to reading them. So I decided to give How to Stop Time a go because I've read some of Matt Haig's Christmas children's books and loved them and I absolutely loved How to Stop Time. Like I think it's become one of my favourite books. I loved it so much. It's quite a odd story it's basically about a man who has a rare condition which means he's lived for centuries but i really liked how it explored that and how he had to live with that through different time periods um i loved that it went through like all the different centuries that he'd lived um and the things he'd experienced and trying to keep his condition a secret um i just i loved everything about it Number three on the list is The Outsider by Stephen King. So we actually do have a Stephen King novel on this list. It's his latest book, I think, and it is very much back to how Stephen King books used to be. Like, I find his newer things just too bizarre and not in a good way, but The Outsider is very much back to the good old days of Stephen King. Um, so it's a crime novel, but with a supernatural twist and I just loved it. I think it's quite a thick book so don't be put off by that. I mean I read it on my Kindle so I'm not too sure but I think it is quite a thick book but if you were a fan of Stephen King's older novels definitely give The Outsider a go because it is back to the very excellent writing of Stephen King. Number four on the list is The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. And I think this is a young adult book, but I am very much a fan of young adult fiction and <clears throat> a big, big believer in not being restrained by labels that are put on books. So like if a book is labeled as a children's book or a young adult book, there is no reason why an adult cannot read it because there are some excellent excellent young adult books out there as the Roanoke Girls proved. So it is a thriller and I'll be honest I called pretty much early on in the novel what was happening but I don't think it tries to cover it up but that doesn't make it any less gripping. It's basically a look at why the girls in the Roanoke family either run away or die and 
even though I think pretty much everyone would twig what was happening in it very early, it's still very, very gripping and still makes you want to read on to find out how it is going to conclude. Number five on the list is another young adult book and it's Strange Star by Emma Carroll. I've read quite a few Emma Carroll books now and they're like historical fiction books. So this one is like a fictional look at maybe how Mary Shelley could have been inspired to write Frankenstein. Obviously like I say it is fictional, there's no hard evidence that this happened and this is why Mary Shelley wrote the book. <laughs> But it is very, very interesting. It has got a huge gothic vibe to it, obviously with talking about Mary Shelley and Frankenstein. And I think this one is by far the best Emma Carroll book that I've read. Number six on the list is Frankenstein's Bucket List by J.C. Williams. Now, this is not the normal book, kind of book that I'd read. Like, I would pretty much give anything a go. But this is quite a light-hearted comedy book and as you can see from the previous books that I've told you about that is not what I normally go for I very much like thrillers horrors crime fiction but I gave it a go seeing as I'd read so many like thriller books and my mum was reading Frankenstein too and she said it was very funny and I loved it it's very heartwarming quite sad in places and laugh out loud funny like I just loved it and I cannot wait to read the second book number seven on the list and we're going back to the darker things now is they both die at the end by Adam Silvera I'm not too sure how you say his name it's either Adam Silvera or Adam Silvera but they both die at the end now <clears throat> anyone who's watched the Black Mirror series on Netflix needs to read this book like, I got such strong Black Mirror vibes from this and I loved it. I mean, you can tell from the title what happens because they do indeed both die at the end. But I actually, I cried at the end because it is sad but it's done in a really nice way as well. Like, I loved the whole concept of this book. I loved the story and... Even though the ending was very, very sad, it was very beautifully done. <laughs> Number eight on the list is another debut novel and it's The House Beneath the Oak Trees by Faye Bell. And not only is this a debut novel, it's also a self-published novel. Now I'm on a couple of book groups on Facebook and one of the groups Faye Bell is on. So I'd heard quite a bit about this book and decided to give it a go around Halloween time because it is um, like a horror supernatural book and I was absolutely terrified like that's how good it is I read some of it when I was home on my own and regretted it because I was just an absolute nervous wreck and then I tend to do my reading on a night and I was that petrified like I dare not even get up to go to the toilet in the night because the book terrified me um, so if you like horror books the House Beneath the Oak Trees is definitely one to give a go because for a self-published debut novel it is fantastic. Number nine on the list is Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli and this is the novel that the film Love, Simon is based off of. I didn't know that when I started reading the book and I haven't seen Love, Simon though I do now really want to watch it but even if you've seen the film, I would say read the book. I found it very funny, very heartwarming and you are very much trying to work out what is happening in it. If you've seen the film, then obviously you already know, but Simon is emailing somebody that he goes to school with, but neither of them know each other's real names, like they use aliases. Um, both of them are gay and don't really want anyone else in the school to know so it's so about trying to find like who who they are because you desperately want to know who Simon is emailing but I also think it's a really really good subject for a young adult book and I'm actually really pleased that they made a film about it as well so I really really want to read no I really really want to watch the film now and I kind of hope it does the book justice because 
the book was amazing. And the final book on my list is Miss Marley by Vanessa Le Fay. And it's the untold story of Jake Marley. Now, of course, Jake Marley is Scrooge's partner in The Christmas Carol. And I absolutely adore The Christmas Carol. I don't know what it is about it, but I read the book every Christmas. I love the film adaptations of it. Like, I am a huge, huge Christmas Carol fan. So I was a little bit nervous to read Miss Marley in case it didn't do it justice because obviously we don't know a lot about Jake Marley. You never find out much about him in Christmas Carol. And the idea of a sister is completely made up because that is never mentioned in Charles Dickens' book. But I think the fact that it is written from a sister's point of view is better than writing it from Jacob's point of view because it sort of gives you a bit more freedom and without sort of annoying diehard fans of Christmas Carol. I loved it. I loved like looking a bit more at Jacob's backstory and maybe why he was like he was and why he ended up with the chains on him. Like I actually think I will read Miss Marley alongside the Christmas Carol every year now because I loved it that much. So they were my top 10 books of 2018. I highly recommend checking them out for yourselves. Obviously I couldn't give you much detail about them because this would end up being an extremely long video. But I do highly recommend checking out each and every one of the books on this list. I think there's quite a wide variety of genres on here so hopefully like there's something for everyone. But check them all out, like have a look at them all because you just might be surprised. Like if a thriller's not your normal thing, one of these things on this list might be for you. Um, I don't know how many books I'm going to end up reading in 2019. I'd like to get to 30 again, but we'll have to see. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And with that being said, I'm gonna get gone and we'll see you guys next time.